Welcome back to the Robot Brains podcast on the DL, where we take a step away from AI and learn more about our latest guest with 10 quick personal questions. All right, let's dive in. If you could have a robot take over any part of your life, what would you have it do? So that particular thing actually already happened. And it was already in 2017 uh, when I, I imported the, the Xiaomi Mejia Roborock S50 vacuum cleaner from, from China because uh, you couldn't buy them yet, at least not in, in Europe. I was just blown away by how good the SLAM implementation was. It mapped your entire house and it went from room to room and it, it never got stuck. Uh, so I bought a bunch of them, oh. one for every floor. Oh. And so that's the one part of my life that I actually have robots do. <laughs> and now they're starting to really take off. Who has inspired you the most in your career journey? There are so many people um, and so many of the obvious people um, that that you would expect that you see today that have done great things. But I actually think in terms of uh, style of leadership, there are two, uh, not necessarily specific people, but style. So one of the types of um, leaders I saw was actually when I did my military service in Sweden. And this is kind of where, I, for the first time in my life at least, I learned this sort of leading by doing style. Very simple, but very effective. Like if you want people to do something, you have to be prepared to do it yourself. So that had a big impact on me. And then later on, that was kind of replaced more and more by this sort of meritocratic, Socratic debate style that you learn at university. It's not, it's actually not about, you don't have to do it yourself even. It's just about the best idea and you should let the best idea win. And that is something that I try to apply quite a lot at Spotify. We have these literally Socratic debates. I, I have a saying, which is, you know, it's, it's a bit cheeky when other companies say kind of, move fast, break things, code decide arguments, all of these things that aim at speed. I try to say the opposite. You know, talk is cheap, so we should do a lot of it. It's much cheaper than writing code and shipping the wrong thing. <laughs> so <laughs> we tend to talk a lot. And uh, I think um, that's a way of, you know, we have all these co- all this complexity in the company. We're supposed to make music work with podcasts, with all these things. So we have to eat that complexity and talk a lot between the teams instead of shipping that complexity to the end user and you know, the, the worst thing that could happen to me is that a user says, looks at Spotify and sa- says, you know, I can literally see the org chart in the product. Like this is probably a different team from this team. So, so that's, uh, that's my leadership style. I think Socratic debate. So maybe Socrates then <laughs> is the inspiration when I think about it. Yeah. Socrates. <laughs> if you could give robots and machines one human value, what would it be? It, it almost feels like you need to answer um, values because I mean, it is incredibly important that we sort of solve the long-term value alignment problem between machines and, and humans. The, the caveat to that is though, I don't think uh, it is a, I don't think it's a single thing that you solve. It's not an algorithm or something that you solve because we, we kind of have that value alignment problem between humans as well. It seems like the big problem with the alignment problem is to figure out what the shared values are, not to actually implement them. So I think it's incredibly, I think it'd be great if they had it. I don't know, if, but even if we know where to put those values in our algorithms, I don't know how we agree on them. That I think is the biggest problem. Uh, so in, in when I don't think we can solve that, I actually think that while there are great risks of creating suffering, if you create artificial consciousness, I kind of agree with people like Max Tegmark and others that Sort of humanity spreading consciousness through the galaxy, you know, biological or silicon wise. It's a beautiful goal for us to have. Uh, because even if there is, you know, let's say there's great beauty out there in the galaxy, but it, if beauty really only exists in consciousness, so it can't really, it doesn't really exist if there's no consciousness there to perceive it. Voyager one, I think is the spacecraft that has come the furthest out in the galaxy. It's probably interstellar now. You know, if, if that had consciousness and it could actually appreciate all the beauty, I think that would have been, it would have helped humanity's mission in this, in this, uh, world. So I think consciousness actually. If you had to give up work and volunteer for the rest of your life, what would you do and why? This one is actually easy. Uh, don't tell my boss, but I would probably keep doing what I'm doing right now, but for free. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't say this on a podcast, but. Just kind of being forced 
quote unquote forced to keep learning and staying up to speed on new things like uh, machine learning or uh, quantum computing or blockchain or something like this, because I have to, it's my job. And Daniel keeps asking me about this stuff. Like, what do you think of this? It is a real privilege for a tech geek like myself. It keeps me from, from uh, getting stale. <laughs> Uh, I think if I didn't work at Spotify though, for the world, it would very li likely be trying to combine AI with climate change. It certainly seems like the most high impact and most important thing to do. Uh, I also love to kind of write and tell stories, sort of fact or fiction. So I'd probably find some way to write something. What's the last book you read? The last book I read was uh, finally uh, Gödel's Proof um, by um, Ernest Nagel and James R. Whitman. This on meta mathematics and the fact that there's a, there are two statements that you can't prove that always boggled me uh and so i decided to actually uh read the proof and i found the book uh very uh much easier to read than i thought not not that the proof is easy to understand best present you've ever received you know the ticket to life it's a low probability of being born among all the people that could have been born and it's a it's a crazy ride so i'm very very fortunate to be on it Dinner with one person, living or diseased? Probably uh, Feynman. Most overrated virtue? Competitiveness, I think. People who say, like, I'm very competitive, I find that uh, to be often just the same as I'm very short-term focused. What's something that many people don't know about you? I sang in a choir uh, when I was young. Oh, wow. <laughs> Could have made this a music episode, huh? <laughs> I don't think I would perform very well now. But this this was before the teenage years or early teenage years. But I wish I would have continued. Now I really wish I would have. 